laying in bed, staring at the ceiling, Daniel listened to his neighbors fighting. He had never met them, but after a year of this, he knew their names. Frank, the husband, was a bad drunk, or at least that's what Daniel thought. Frank would come home, yell at Anna, the wife, until she either stormed off or slammed the door and fought back. Tonight was different. Someone crossed the line, and things had gotten violent. At first, they were just yelling when came a loud smack. Daniel couldn't tell who hit who, but the arguing stopped and the sounds of the scuffle started. It didn't last long. There was a heavy thud and everything got quiet. He could hear the slight thumping sound mixed with a sort of muffled grunting that lasted a minute or two, then nothing. No screaming, no arguing, no movement at all. It was as if they both dropped at the same time. Sitting up and grabbing his phone, Daniel paused when he heard the sound of footsteps followed by the slam of the front door. Phone in hand, he slipped out of bed and went to his front door to sneak a peek through the peephole. The dim hallway lights gave his view an eerie feel, but there is no one there. He missed whoever it was, but it didn't matter. Judging by what he heard, someone was hurt and possibly dead. Dialing 911, he called for help, then tried to go back to bed. It wasn't long before he heard a sound coming from next door. The police hadn't arrived yet, so he knew it wasn't them, but there's no denying someone was moving around. At first there was a low groaning sound, and then an explosion of a noise as whoever it was started thrashing the place. When the police finally arrived, things got worse. After pounding on the door shouting sheriff's department, they kicked it open and started yelling for the person to get on the ground. One of the officers yelled, taser deployed and then everything went crazy. It took a moment for Daniel to realize the cops were the ones screaming for help. Officer Down, a distressed voice called out, seconds before shots were fired. Falling out of bed and crawling across the floor, Daniel hurried to the restroom and took cover in the bathtub. More shots rang out from the hallway, followed by screaming, then quiet. An unfamiliar sound drifted in after a few seconds. A muffled, wet, smacking mix with an almost animalistic growl that could be heard. The combination sent an odd sensation of confusion and fear through Daniel as he lay there listening. It almost sounded like someone was eating. The more he focused on it, he was almost certain that's what it was. Sirens approaching cut through the noise followed by the sound of the person in the hall taking off running. He couldn't tell which direction they had gone, but it didn't matter. As long as they weren't at his front door, he felt safe enough to get out of the tub. Stepping out of the restroom, he could hear the police in the parking lot barking order through their PA system. Curiosity got the best of him. Quickly moving to his bedroom window, he peeped through the curtains to get a look. He could see the squad cars and officers, but he couldn't see who they were talking to. After a few seconds, a figure rushed in, and the police started shooting. They pumped him full of rounds, but he wouldn't go down. He ran straight at them and managed to grab one of the officers. That's when Daniel saw him. It was Frank. He'd been shot at least a dozen times and had a knife sticking out of his neck, but he was still moving. He was tearing into the cop he tackled and was taking bites out of his face and neck. What the fuck? Daniel muttered just before a dull thud came from his front door, nearly scared him to death. Turning to the face of the noise, the smell of blood and gunpowder wafered in. A second thud reverberated through the room, and there was a force behind this one. The impact caused a picture to fall off the wall and sent whoever was on the other side of the door into a frenzy. They snarled and banged against it, sounding more like a wild animal than a human being. Lost somewhere between panic and shock, Daniel stood silently staring at the door. Mouth dry, heart pounding, his mind raced to the conclusion he needed a weapon. The only thing he had was an old aluminum bat he kept next to the bed. Keeping his eyes glued to the entrance, he moved slowly, trying not to make any noise. About halfway across the room, the pounding at the door stopped, and so did he. Shouting and the sirens at the parking lot turned to a white noise. His mind, whoever was in that hall, was about to come crashing in any second now. Taking a deep breath and holding it, he darted to the bat, grabbed it, and turned to swing, but nothing happened. After a long moment of silence, he exhaled slowly and then quietly made his way to the front door and stopped. There was a pool of blood on the floor that was coming from the hall. Doing his best to avoid it, he nervously stepped up and took a look through the peephole. Other than a body on the ground, the hall was empty. 
He couldn't see exactly what was wrong with the person, but there was a lot of blood. More gunfire from the parking lot made him jump and back away. Whatever was happening, he wanted no parts of it. Staring at the growing pool on his floor, he frowned and then headed to grab some towels to soak up the mess. After using nearly all his towels, he flopped down on his sofa listening to the chaos outside. The police were everywhere. He thought it would all be over soon, but it wasn't. Hours passed. There were two more shootouts, the last one being right outside his door. When it was all said and done, five bodies were removed from the scene by men in hazmat suits. Less than an hour later, the entire complex was quarantined. As soon as the announcement was made, everyone including Daniel stepped out of their homes and started asking questions. As the crowd gathered, he stepped back to get out of the way and wound up standing off to the side. It didn't take long for things to get out of control. People refused to be prisoners in their own homes. One lady attempted to get in her car to drive away and was arrested on the spot. That was the tipping point. Some kid in the back of the crowd threw a bottle at the cops and everyone went nuts. Backing away from the surging crowd, he glanced to his left and saw a girl with her cell phone out, live streaming the chaos. He watched her for a moment before someone went sprinting by for screaming for help. The girl with the phone turned to film him and was blindsided by what looked like a homeless man. The impact was brutal. When they hit the ground, the bag lady started attacking the girl, snarling and screaming. The bag lady mounted the girl, pinning her down. She unleashed a flurry of punches and attempted to bite the girl before someone stopped her. A couple of guys that had been standing nearby grabbed the bag lady, pulled her away. During the struggle, she bit one of them. The guy let go and she attacked the second man. He'd seen enough. Daniel ran full speed back to his apartment and locked the door.